There is much more than meets the eye. He was on this on the sniff, on the cusp of unearthing a mega scam. Now, Ganesh, a social activist and whistleblower, has helped expose a lot of scams, including the Housing Cooperative Society scam, the G category, and the Judicial Colony Land scam. He apparently spoke to DK Ravi and said that DK Ravi was investigating links of a top builder with a housing cooperative society. He had found evidence that top builders were evading commercial tax with the help of several housing societies. And DK Ravi was planning a raid. Let's take a listen to what he told Pooja Prasanna in detail. Just three days before the death of uh, DK Ravi, he had contacted a whistleblower, a renowned whistleblower who, who had helped uh, expose several scams, several land scams. And on Thursday, he had gotten in touch uh, with Mr. Ganesh, uh, seeking his help in exposing several other scams. Let's uh, hear from him what exactly happened. So when did this conversation take place and what did DK Ravi ask of you? See, basically, this conversation took place on Thursday or Friday, I don't know I recall. And uh, what he exactly told me is that subsequent to my actions, there are some recovery by income tax to the tune of around 400 crores from housing societies and the allied developers. And also there is a service tax violation and stamp duty violations. So in the same length, he has raided some prominent developers and those are have a link with the housing societies. So in that connection, there could be a commercial tax uh, connection also. In that connection, he wanted certain documents and uh, discuss mm -hmm. so that we could work together mm -hmm. to see that the commercial tax violation also could be right. unearthed. So he was uh, getting into the depths of the links between cooperative housing societies and several prominent uh, builders in the city. Yeah, the builders are the developers who are associated with the house, well, the house building cooperative societies. Mm -hmm. They are big people actually, mm -hmm. land mafia. Mm -hmm. And those are all the people, he has raided some of them mm -hmm. and he wanted to go behind them okay. and make a real breakthrough. Right. And uh, this was a scam that he was looking at, the scam uh, uh, to, to the tune of uh, 400 crores, you say? No, 400 crores was recovered by income tax right. from certain developers. Right. So same length, he wanted to see that commercial tax violation angle right. and he wanted to recover so that the state government could get the benefit of it. Just, just for our viewers' benefit, uh, you are a complainant in one such case. Exactly what was your complaint and how did that uh, case go for? See, my complaint is basically with a stamp and registration violation mm -hmm. regarding one cooperative society where there are some prominent developers. Right. Uh, who the people who get into an agreement with cooperative societies and they develop the lands. In that, there is a stamp duty violation and also service tax violations. Mm -hmm. So the department have taken action and they have recovered also and in the process of recovery right. in the same length he has raided certain developers for whom again I have not complained yet right. there are some documents with me mm -hmm. again against the developers whom he has raided for commercial tax violations right. so in that connection he wanted some more right. like what all the developers whom I have the documents with that he wanted to see the commercial tax angle and wanted to recover so he was investigating uh, investigating the tax evasions of several prominent uh, uh, developers and he was looking to raid them very soon very true like he was looking at uh, going behind big developers who are very prominent in bangalore mm -hmm. and he wanted to really recover the evasion of taxes right. from them. Uh, when had he when did he want to meet you how soon did he want no, he to said this week we'll meet mm -hmm. basically so i was contemplating that i'll meet him you know like uh, today or tomorrow or something like that right. so before that the incident has happened right. and in this incident basically what has happened is what is annoying is that even before the investigation has commenced the government has taken a stand that it is suicide it could be suicide i don't deny that but what happens is they have uh, you know, like, pro I mean, started their investigation. The FAR says under section 174 of CRPC. 174 doesn't give any scope for what prompted him, if at all, if it is suicide, what prompted him to commit suicide. But when you spoke to him last in that telephonic conversation, he was l looking at investigating further, looking at uh, uh, recovering more tax and having several meetings. Did you get any indication that this was a man who was defeated? No, no, no. He was looking strong and this thing like he wanted to go really go big mm -hmm. so there is no indication at all where you know like he had this thought or anything so that's what I'm telling here there's a suspicion is that he goes to the office on Monday morning and comes from the office to kill himself if that is the case definitely such a strong person who have taken such steps and got more than about 100 crores of revenue within one month mm -hmm. 
no, he practically got the revenue and filled the exchequer of the government. Such a man would have at least, you know, like thought of sending a message, if at all if he was under some pressure and he, uh, he had to kill himself, he has planned to kill himself, he would have definitely sent a strong message for the people right. who have been taking this action. Such message in the form of any death note is not available. Number one. Number two, even before the post-mortem report has come in, right now it is not at coming, just by the look of it, the government taking a stand or the police investigating in the line that it is suicide by booking case under section 174, not even 174C of CRPC, which says, which really, you know, like gives the thing that what prompted him to kill himself. First of all, the question, the whole state is, you know, like suspicious whether it is a suicide at all. Mm -hmm. And the whole, you know, like people have been absolutely clear that, you know, they have been having the suspicion that he has been killed. Absolutely. At that time, the government taking a stand and concluding mm -hmm. the FAR, what has been read by the Chief Minister in the Assembly or the Home Minister in the Assembly, which clearly says that it is a suicide and this is for personal reasons. How is it that even the investigation has not begun? The police have come to conclusion that it is suicide and for a personal reason. Have you are known to uh, uh, known for exposing several land scams. Has somebody gotten in touch with you either from the investigating uh, uh, authority or somebody from the government to ask you what conversation you had? No, 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 no. The, I have not told them. They maybe they also don't know. They, nobody has contacted. But my anguish is that in the previous case where Mahantesh also came on the board about that. Uh, 21 days it took to nap the culprits and things. In the process of this 21 days, they tried to defame Mahantesh by linking him with some women and uh, prostitution and brothel and what not. Okay. That attempt, my fear is that such a, uh, you know, like strong people who have been going against the car, uh, this thing, after the death at the process of investigation or even before the investigation begins, mm -hmm. There is an attempt to defame the people so that the morale of the family or anybody who could take the investigation forward has been completely defeated. That sort of an attempt, if this government or the police try to make, this time it is different because the people have come on streets. So it is not going to be taken easily. So my request to the government or the police is do the proper investigation, preferably by CBA because there is a strong suspicion by the people. So this suspicion will prevail whatever you do, even if you do a proper investigation and try to say it's a suicide, because the way it's going, it has already concluded that it's a suicide. Even if you give the message and if it could be suicide also, that could be a suspicion prevailing. So best thing is to give it to the central agencies if the government doesn't have anything to do with this episode. Absolutely. There you heard it, uh, a whistleblower, Mr. Ganesh, uh, talking exclusively to Times Now.